Hey everyone, and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today we are taking a look at the SV01 Pro 3D printer by Soval 3D. It is a substantial upgrade over their original SV01 with auto bed leveling, touchscreen display, flexible build plates, and much, much more. But does that translate into high quality 3D prints? Let's find out. Before we begin, this SV01 Pro was sent to me for a review by Soval 3D. They aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this printer for the last month. Let's get started. The SV01 Pro is a filament-based 3D printer by Soval 3D, with a rectangular build volume of 280mm by 240mm by 300mm. It is the upgraded version of the original SV01, with enough upgrades that I think it earns its pro designation. The hot end uses a standard 0.4mm brass nozzle and is fed 1.75mm filaments from the direct drive extruder right above it. The extruder has an easy to adjust tensioner and loading and unloading filaments is a breeze. Next to the extruder is the pre-installed CR Touch Pro, which enables auto bed leveling to get consistent first layers. In front of the extruder is a single blower style cooling fan. It provides a large amount of air which quickly cools down prints. However, at max speed, the fan has a bit of a grinding noise. It's not too harsh, however it was a surprise the first time it kicked in, compared to the silence of the rest of the machine. The x-axis is supported by dual z-axis motors. This makes the z-axis very stable. The two lead screws have bearing supports at the top. The spool holder is located on top of the printer, where the filament detector is also located. When it detects filament has run out, it will pause the prints and prompt you to switch filaments. It will then resume where it left off. Moving towards the bottom of the printer, the SV01 Pro comes with a flexible magnetic mat as the print surface. The build plate is very grippy, but the flexibility makes it very easy to peel prints off of afterwards. The bed itself is heated and supported by four spring-loaded screws in the four corners for initial leveling. Both the X and Y axis have easy-to-use belt tensioners. The base of the printer contains the micro SD card slot and micro USB ports, so you can print directly from the SD card or connect to a computer or Raspberry Pi. Around the side is the full-color graphical touchscreen display. The user interface is awesome and you can switch between light and dark modes with a tab. The menu options are intuitively laid out with a move tab, a preheat and print tab, and a settings tab. The touchscreen is responsive, and you can tell a lot of thought and design went into it. You can remove the base of the printer to expose the Creality brain. It uses a Creality version 4.2.2 mainboard, which is a 32-bit control board running a version of Marlin 2 firmware. It uses TMC2208 stepper motor drivers, which are near silence in operation. The noise during printing mostly comes from the cooling fan as mentioned before, but it is still comfortable to be in the same room while printing. Assembly is extremely easy, as the printer arrives mostly assembled. It's just a matter of sliding in the X and Z gantry into the pre-cut slots on the base and tightening four screws. Attach the touchscreen cable, peel off the protective plastic, and assembly completes. Be sure to check all the V-slot wheels though, as my unit needed to have all of the wheels adjusted to be tight against the frame. The touchscreen walks you through the initial tramming of the bed, then you can kick off the auto bed leveling from there. It probes 25 points on the bed and builds a pretty high resolution mesh. The UI even shows the leveling matrix, which is useful in case you want to try and get the bed more level so that the auto bed leveling has to do less work. Interestingly, I received two micro SD cards. There is one already in the printer, as well as one in the USB converter. The files were almost identical, but the one in the printer had two extra G code files for a clock spring model. I bet that this was a quality control test card that was accidentally left in the printer. As for software, Soval 3D recommends Cura as the slicer. As of Cura 5.1, there is no pre built profile for the SV01. Pro, but I used the original SV01 profile and adjusted the bed dimensions to match, and that worked great. So now let's talk about the prints. You can find what settings, filaments, and models I used on my 3D print log profile linked in the description. First up, the included sample Benchy G-code. I loaded some PLA filaments and pressed prints, and this Benchy is one of the better first prints that I've seen. The layers are consistent, and the bow is smooth, which indicates consistent extrusion and plenty of cooling. The only defects are very slight wisps of stringing in the rear windows, and a pronounced elephant's foot at the bottom of the prints. That went away after adjusting the Z-axis offset though. Next up, Cuddly Owls by Mooses. These show a few more defects that seem to be echo or ghosting as the printer tries to make sharp direction changes. The consistent curves around the back do not show these same defects. It's only around the sharp corners of the nose and eyes. The rest of the prints is really good though. 
I'm particularly impressed with the overhangs on the wings. They printed well, even towards the tip. And the elephant's foot that we saw on the benchy has been fixed. Time to stress the printer with this Iron Man by ICZ Furs. I printed this model at 0.5mm layer height with no supports, which took 34 hours to print. It shows just how much grip the build plate has. The arms and legs were all separate prints until they finally connected around 20 hours in. And not only did they stay perfectly stuck to the build plates, the SV01 Pro did an amazing job with the almost horizontal overhangs on the butt and chest. There was no support, so it was a few hours of expecting to come back to a mound of spaghetti. But that didn't happen. The prints finished successfully. If you search for it, you can find some areas with inconsistencies, like around the arm, but they're really so minor that your eyes doesn't catch them unless you're specifically looking for them. Overall, this is an impressive model. And just to check that it wasn't the filament causing the inconsistencies in the Iron Man, I printed this low poly Typhlosion by CK Yelly. It is beautiful, an absolutely perfect print. I could look at this print all day long. Interestingly, the ghosting issues that we saw in the Cuddly Owls aren't present here. The sharp angle changes look very consistent throughout the print. Next up, Odile the Swan by Luby. My first print failed. The beak snapped where it met the neck. I strengthened the area with more walls and infill, and the second version printed successfully. There was no stringing between the wings, but some of the layer changes were showing extrusion issues at the start, causing small pitting. Adjusting the retraction settings might account for that. Finally, let's look at printing in spiral vase mode. Unfortunately, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Since the SV01 Pro uses a Creality mainboard, it shares some of the issues that I've seen on some of Creality's printers, namely that the power loss detection interferes with spiral vase mode prints. It pauses every few seconds, leaving ugly blobs on the outside of the prints. Thankfully, you can use an M413S0 command in your G-code to disable power loss detection. By adding that to your spiral vase mode G-code, the vases print flawlessly. I was able to scale this vase to the max height of 300 millimeters, and it printed perfectly. Very consistent extrusion, and no issues reaching the max height. The SV01 Pro can also handle flexible filaments like TPU. I had no issues printing this Yoda bust with Amazon Basic TPU. It adhered to the print bed well, but peeled off nicely, and the model itself printed great. No retraction or extrusion issues. And speaking of power loss detection, both its and filament runout detection features work. For the filament runout detection, it will pause the print and move to 0, zero and prompt you to change the filament. After replacing the filament, it resumes right where it left off. The power loss detection also works. At least it does the first time. When it regains power, it prompts you to resume the print where it left off. However, it only ever worked once for a single print. If you lose power a second time, it doesn't seem to detect that and doesn't prompt you to resume. This is the first time that I've seen that limitation, so that might be important to you if you live in an area with unreliable power. I had a few small issues during my testing. Right after assembly, the filament runout sensor felt very stiff. There was more friction than I expected, and I was concerned that it might be causing the print defects that I saw on the Cuddly Owl. I even printed a second copy without using the sensor to test, but it turned out not to cause any print differences. After just a few hours of printing though, the filament sensor is now much smoother, so I guess it just had to be worn in. When I was checking the mainboard, I noticed that the wires for the fan was crushed against the frame from the factory. My fan still worked, but if the wire was damaged a little more, then that would prevent the fan from working and cooling the stepper drivers. The only other issue is the rough sounding print cooling fan. The rest of the machine is so quiet, it was a little disappointing to hear the slight grinding of the cooling fan. It's still comfortable to be in the same room while the SV01 Pro is printing, the cooling fan just draws attention to itself when it kicks in. In conclusion, I think the SV01 Pro earns its Pro designation. It has all of the features you'd expect like auto bed leveling, filament runout detection, and power loss recovery. The direct drive extruder is powerful and lets you really push out plastic, and the dual Z-axis is very stable. The flexible build plate works great. It's grippy, yet still easy to peel prints off of. And the touchscreen UI is one of the best touchscreens that I've worked with. The Suval 3D SV01 Pro sells for $329 US dollars. Considering all of the upgrades, I think that is a great price. Suval says that it would cost $156 to buy all of the upgrades individually, and considering that the original SV01 is $269, the Pro model will save you about $100. I think that this would be a great 3D printer for someone looking for all the bells and whistles at this price point. 
So thank you all for watching my review of the Soval 3D SVO1 Pro. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. And check out my other 3D printer reviews. I've reviewed quite a number of large format Pro printers recently. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my upcoming reviews. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.